Mmm. Nothing like starting off the new year with a nightmare. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Nightmare Alley, the latest film from Gamaliel Del Toro. This movie came out right at the tail end of December. And now if you were living in BC right now, you would understand how difficult it is to kind of get together to go and see a movie right now, considering we are near on going, getting close to Quebec's lockdown features. But I only just saw this the other day, and I will admit if I had seen this last year, I would have put this on my top 10 list. Not in a high regard, but it is a really well put together film, especially from the visual and production design style standpoint, but that is kind of something to be expected of Gamilo del Toro. The film follows Bradley Cooper's character, who's kind of this mysterious runaway who joins the carnival and finds himself under the tutelage of a mentalist who had a fantastic skill but realized that he was using it to a degree that was egregious and near on villainy. He tries to tell Bradley that there is a limit to this skill, that you can't use it to its full extent, otherwise you begin to believe the lies that you were telling people. You begin to believe that you actually have these abilities. But of course he doesn't follow those rules, but he does become a very successful mentalist and eventually finds himself in a dangerous situation that is far more reaching than he originally thought, but he also finds himself ensnared by a very seductive, very mysterious psychiatrist played by Kate Blanchett. Her character is actually probably one of my favorites. Everything about her character, from how she talks to how she dresses to, especially how her office is designed, is so fun to see. It's so cool, so mysterious, so alluring. There is something that I will get out of the way. If you watch this film, you will feel like you've seen the story before, and that's because, technically speaking, you have. This is a remake of a film from 1947, which makes sense because a lot of the ideas and the tropes that happen in this film are very akin to stuff that we've seen in other stories, especially of this nature. When I was watching the film about halfway through, both my wife and I predicted how the film was going to end and we were dead on right. It is still a very entertaining film to see, and even if it doesn't follow everything about the 1947 film to the letter, which I'm not entirely certain of, but I imagine that it still follows some aspects, especially for Del Toro to go out of his way to make a two hour and 30 minute remake of a 1947 film. The aesthetic the aesthetic of this film is definitely one of the big draw points, everything from the costumes to how the world is designed to how the characters are shot and portrayed is a visual delight, as is almost all of the time of Gamal Del Toro's films. But a bit like Shape of Water, there are a few things that you'll be sitting off to the side going, hey, wait a minute, what about that? Hey, shouldn't they have done that? Wouldn't this have happened by now? And that really shows a lot more in this film than it did in Shape of Water, in my opinion, because that film was about a man fish who falls in love with a lady. You are definitely allowed some form of suspension of disbelief with that film. Whereas this one, you keep thinking it might delve into a supernatural element, but it never does. But it hangs on that, and that is something that kind of almost makes some of the weak story points excusable. There are a few character traits about Bradley Cooper's character or Kate Blanchett's character that you kind of wish there was a little bit more to. You wish there was more to it, but also that some of the aspects of the story are quite easily to be poked fun of. For instance, if Pitch Meeting hasn't done a video about it or Honest Trailers does make a video about this movie, they will find holes in this film galore. But as I said, that's kind of what you get with a film like this, especially from Gamal Del Toro. You're so engaged in the visual aspect of the film and how the story and the world is being portrayed through the, his lens that you're willing to excuse a few of these things. And considering the performances by everyone in this film are top notch everyone does a really good job despite how predictable the ending is you still find it satisfactory i really enjoyed nightmare alley i would very much like to watch this movie again particularly one scene or one set i would like to see more of is Kate Blanchett's office. Her office is so cool. It is such a well-designed, such a visually, ooh, appealing kind of room. I would watch it just to see this room again. In the end, my final rating for Nightmare Alley is a five out of seven. If you haven't seen this movie, go and watch it. If you're waiting for it to come out on VOD or whatever, you can do that too. This movie, considering all of the other projects that he had in line, that he passed down, that he, he handed down, he gave away, 
to make this one. Not that I'm complaining, I still really enjoyed it. It's not one of his upper tier films, but it is undeniably a well put together film. But anyways guys, that's all from me. What did you guys think of this movie? Let me know in the comments below if you've seen it. Um, what do you think about other Del Toro films? What are your favorites? I have a few. And if you liked the video, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. It helps the channel grow and kind of trying to get to the 4,000 uh, subscriber mark uh, this year. So here's hoping if you guys want to share the page out, that'd be very much appreciated. Otherwise, guys, see you next time. Thanks for watching the video. You're probably wondering who I am. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. You know, Nitz, you can't get more money unless you offer questionable favors. Yeah, guy. Unless, of course, those favors involve the ladies, guy. <sniffs> By support, I mean getting the word out, guys. Oh, well, couldn't you find a better means than this guy? All he seems to talk about is supernatural, or hold a coffee mug real awkward. Why didn't you ask a Kardashian or something? Yeah, guy. Get in with the ladies, guy. <sniffs> hey, he's trying to help out. Like you've been trying with Kimmy Burton? I've seen Jabba the Hutt finish a marathon faster. Yeah, guy. You're a massive slug thing, guy. <sighs> to see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.